This ain't wide enough. Very, very narrow. Nick, 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 Nick. There is far more extensive damage to our hull than we thought there would be. We've got so much like, rust damage, so much rust damage here. This is someone angle grinding and it doesn't come off. Just what? The... Yes, Cookie Monster pajamas. I've had these pajamas for like- Oh, at least 10 years. More than that, 15 years. And where did you get them from? Asda. Yeah. The equivalent of English Walmart for yeah. five pounds. Yeah. They're in the shut door. They are, they actually are in the shut door. <laughs> it was a three day public holiday in Turkey, which essentially means that we are, well, Kind of left our own devices which is great because we have spent a long long time getting this boat ready in the last we've only been here two weeks and in the last two weeks we have worked our tushies up haven't we yes we didn't film what we've been up to in the last couple of days but over the last few days we've actually been on a little mini adventure and i didn't take any footage because i just wanted us to enjoy ourselves but Kavanch from Sea Wind Europe here um took us to a little village called Alicati that's probably not how you pronounce it. And it was honestly one of the most beautiful villages that I've ever been to. I mean, it was just stunning. And he took us out for a dinner, which was delicious and amazing. And then the next morning, he and his wife took us out for a Turkish breakfast, which we hadn't had before. I mean, I knew vaguely that Turkish breakfasts were a whole big thing, but I'd never had the chance to actually experience one myself. And it was, no exaggeration, I think the best breakfast that I've ever had in my life. Nick, what do you say? I know that you are, especially when it comes to breakfasts, you are a great believer in hyperbole, aren't you? <laughs> but I'm just very passionate about breakfast. You are very passionate about breakfast. More than any other meal, you are passionate about your breakfast. I would say, um, I know what my top three breakfasts would be, and that would be my top three. Yeah. The top, my top breakfast would be a good English fry up. The second one, actually, by recollection, was a hotel in Kuala Lumpur about 14 years ago. Like a buffet? Yes. Yeah, that was That good. was an amazing one. And this will be top three. I don't even think it's number three. It could be number one, but it's, it's difficult to place breakfast because sometimes you fancy a fry up. We're just falling more and more in love with Turkey with every passing day. And I'm not exaggerating here. We are absolutely loving being in this country and we are very excited about exploring more of Turkey. Hopefully very soon. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good morning, everyone. If I look a little bit tired, it's because we went out last night with Alan and Pia who are on the 1260 behind me. There, there it is. And, you know, like all good nights out start, we were literally just walking past them on the boat, said a quick hello. One kind of little chit chat led to another. We said, why don't you come and have a quick drink with us on the boat before we cook ourselves some dinner? And <laughs> yeah, six hours later, we were in the bar one of the many bars next door, um, drinking raki and Turkish wine and stumbled home in the early hours in the morning. And I was waking up this morning at six o'clock with a clanging halyard, which was extremely annoying because it's very windy here. Um, clanging halyard, that's my new nickname. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Nick's making breakfast. I don't know what else to say. You're hungover. I'm tired and I'm a bit hungover and anyway, today's a big day because we are lifting out our boat actually. Not something we're planning to do and something that I'm not totally like looking forward to. But okay. As you guys I think know, we we shipped the boat from Thailand to Marmaris. And when the boat arrived in Marmaris, we noticed that she was extremely dirty. And as soon as we started cleaning her, we realized that what we thought was just like spots of kind of dust or sand that had kind of hardened and solidified, like specks all over the boat. What we thought was just sand was actually rust, rust specks, rust stains um, all over the boat, like completely covered. And we tried to clean them up and, uh, you know, we could only do so much. So when we got to 
the marina here, Nick sent an email to Seven Star, to the shipping company, and said, look, you know, this is beyond what we would consider to be acceptable. Like, a dirty boat is one thing, a boat covered in rust stains is quite another. And to be fair, the shipping company um, immediately responded and said, we'll send out a surveyor, take a look. And the surveyor arrived two days later and on a weekend. And he was great. He chatted to Kavanch, who is the manager of Sea Wind Europe. And Kavanch said, yep, this is a big job. You know, this is what it's going to cost. This is what we need to do. And the surveyor was like, yep, cool, no problem. So in short, the shipping company are covering the costs of cleaning the boat. But part of that, the surveyor said, look, you're going to have to lift out the boat and we'll cover the costs of that. But you, we can't clean the hull without, with it in the water. It's just impossible, which is fair enough. Um, so we're lifting out today, which is a massive pain. And it's very windy, so it's going to be interesting. We've got help. Uh, all the guys here are going to help us out. And at least we don't have to do any of the actual cleaning. You know, that's all being done by the workers here. I think we're going to have to spend overnight on the hard because they can't get it all done in one day. And then being put back in the water tomorrow. So not really the kind of big day I was planning to have on a hangover. You right, Nick? Uh, not coming? This ain't wide enough. Very, very narrow. Yeah. Need my help, Nick? They want it, they want it. Come on, we're not sticking to you. We've got three small fenders, Nick. One of the big fenders is just stuck, so it's like pulling on the stanchion and it, we can't um, loosen it. Alright, hold that. Take this. We are, uh, we are going for some smaller and fenders and yep. before I jump them. Yep. And then because it's locked right now. Yep. Okay. So if you just keep steady, we can Yep. Do yep. So Alan's just getting us some smaller fenders. I think we're okay here. Okay. We were worried about this fitting. 
we knew we had literally 20 centimetres on each side. Um, yep. So the small fenders have actually come in handy. See, is, is this fender here? It will either pop out or um, yeah. Okay, well we need to take it off. But if you can't, I can't. I can't actually. Hold on, she's it. Can, Mitha, can you push that? Do you have the strength to push that? Yeah, and now we can at least loosen it. Or take the air out of the fender. There's some mini ones. <laughs> I don't think they're much easier. Is this worry free? Yeah. Let's just loosen this knot while we can. Yeah. After about five minutes, Alan did return with some more smaller fenders, which we were able to just pop between our boat and the dock. And with that all done, we're able to move Ruby Rose 2 forward and then start with the haul out process. We thought that going through the French canals was tight and stressful. It's not gonna the lifting straps were manoeuvred into the correct position. Of course, the fenders were also moved so that the hull would continue to be protected from the dock. And I have to say that everyone was so professional and honestly, this could have been, and it frankly was quite a stressful situation, but Alan and Mitha from Seawind Europe and the entire uh, crew at the boatyard and the, all the marina staff, everyone who helped were so professional, clearly very experienced and uh, I honestly could not believe that we got our boat in here but we did and it was thanks to the cool heads of both Mithat who was helming and also all of the staff. Um, so thanks to everyone for making this process as smooth as possible because if we couldn't have hauled her out then we would have been in a bit of a pickle. Just jumped on board. We are on the hard now. I would sum that up as very stressful, very tight, but at least possible. For a moment there, I thought we're gonna to have to abort this entire uh, operation because it's not gonna be possible. And uh, anyway, now we, uh, the guys are just securing the boat and We've got another couple of days of them essentially getting all those rust stains off. That's their primary job. And I think that there's some talk about uh, doing the anti-foul as well, because you can see a lot of the blue paint through uh, on the hull. So yeah, <laughs> as I said, not quite the thing I was hoping to do with the hangover today. But um, anyway, that's certainly cleared the cobwebs away. That's for sure. Okay. It's time to watch me get down a ladder without falling on my ass from Ruby Rose. Hang on a second. Always best to do this in flip-flops or thongs. Right, so here we are, finally, out of the yard. I'm gonna say, like, lifting a boat is stressful. Lifting a boat is even more stressful when the whole boat is literally uh, six inches, eight inches. The, whole, the boat is eight inches narrower than the dock. Pretty damn stressful. But these guys are like consummate professionals. Anyway, the good news is that they got the boat out. Bad news is that unfortunately, okay, I'm not sure you're gonna even pick this up, but if I look under the boat, we've got so much like rust damage, so much rust damage here. So these guys are gonna be working their tushies off. There is far more extensive damage to our hull than we thought there would be, but Seven Star have been thus far very, very cooperative. They have turned around and said, look, we, you know, they've given us written authorization to get the work started. Kivanch and his team have provided a written submission for how much the work is going to cost. And hopefully we'll get actually that the, the formal confirmation. But the work has started. There is also some other bits to do. You know, the anti-foul, we're going to get a layer of anti-foul put on, get this boat clean so we can film her. And there is some work that's required to the anchor box. Essentially, up there, the rust needs to come off. We need to get some, uh, that just needs an anti rust stuff. It's a, a galvanic issue. But then there's also, uh, they've already done the grinding there. Was, they've done that really quickly. So, this, they need to put more protection around there. But I'm also going to show you just the level of right, rust damage 
onto this boat. I mean, look at this. Look, this is someone angle grinding and it doesn't come off. This does not wash off. It's going to be taken off chemically. All right, guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that our patrons get our videos a week early, but they also get ad free videos. So they don't have to sit through all these ads, which I think is actually really valuable. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click on the link down below. They also get loads of other benefits. So check that out if you want. If not, that's totally fine. We appreciate you subscribing to our channel and leaving us a comment down below and giving us a thumbs up if you liked the video. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.